non-monotonic um, non-monotonic uh, reasoning that we have, right? So we're going to take what we have here, and I just want to show you that we can use what we've already learned to make it even more complex. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, incorporate serial argumentation. And I think I actually have, do I have it? Yeah. Just to refresh your memory on serial argumentation, serial argumentation assumes the form S1 plus, is it 1 or 2? Yeah, S1 plus S2 plus dot 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 Sn leads to O leads to Sp. Right, so this is the form that we're going to take. This, right, this is this. Um, no, no, the conclusion, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sn, all of that leads to this, SO is this. Right, that's the conclusion. Our conclusion is that. And then we realize from our conclusion we're able to derive another conclusion, right? Um, so this declaration of war is going to begin, it ends this argument, but it's going to begin, see, it, this ends this argument, but it begins the other, is exactly what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a serial argument now, ending with, um, ending with this, right? So it'll be for all, for all x and y, um, if x and y was a declare war, Okay, and then I introduce some new concepts. Conjunction, modal operator, max casualties. I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to abbreviate it. Write that so you can read it. M A X C A S for max maximum casualties. Okay, so what you can see is I've used a serial argument, right? The conclusion here, right, now becomes the first part of this new argument, right? So um, structure. I'm using this form. This is the format that I'm using. I've already lectured on this with respect to interwoven argument, and the reason why I'm doing this is just to slowly take it. Uh, a step deeper, right? A step deeper so that you can see, oh no, I can do this. I understand. I've already learned what serial argumentation was. I've seen seen it applied um, theoretically, and I've identified it within text, which we did in the JFK speech. Um, so now we can incorporate that with varying degrees of uncertainty, right? With with um, this idea of non-monotonic argumentation. So how is this read? I'm not going to write it out like I did last time. Um, I'm just going to read from it. It basically says, for all x and y, for all x and y, right, if, remember, main connective is our conditional, subordinate connective is our conjunction, so really and truly, this is here, though we don't see it, right, we do this, then we do that, right, but it's not in the problem, it's not properly written that way, but you should just know that, right? You should just keep that in the back of your mind. So our main connective is a conjunction. We know the conjunction, uh, the, the conditional. Conditional takes the form if then. If antecedent then consequence. Um, for all x and y, if x and y declare war. So now, remember, that ended it, but now we're going to start with the declaration of war. So if they declare war then, and if the fact that x and y use full force, and and, and, if the fact that X and Y uses full force is consistent with everything believed to be true, right? It's consistent with everything else believed to be true. It's consistent with that idea. So, for all X and Y, if X and Y declare war, and X and Y use full force, is consistent with everything else believed to be true, then X and Y are going to experience maximum casualties, maximum number of deaths, the maximum number of lives lost. It makes sense, right? If we declare war and 
both sides use as much military force as they can possibly use, then it's the case that both sides are going to experience a high number of casualties. Consistent with, right? It's, and, and what's cool about, what's, I, I'm not trying to you know, say that this example is you know, just necessarily the best. It's, it's, I'm using the, it's a great pedagogical example. Right, because it makes it very clear um, the formal language, but it also makes relative conceptual sense. Right, if both sides declare war on each other and both sides use full force, then that those facts is consistent with the notion that they're going to experience maximum casualties. Right, so um, and then the final thing that we have to do to end this introductory section into non-monotonic logic is very simple, is to, is to um, identify the syllogism, right? And the syllogism should be, should be obvious, right? Hopefully, the syllogism is obvious. What we had in the first part was a conditional as our main con connection, if, then, right? We see that this connects, if we want to look at it like this, right? Right? Declaration of war, right? X and Y declare war connects this main antecedent with this consequence. Well, we can derive then, we know, right? You don't necessarily have to do this, but you can. I'm um, gradually, sort of conceptually, it was very hard to do this, to think of a way to do this on a general level without jumping into the form of language. But you can see. Um, roughly on a ghetto sort of ghetto uh, uh, level, that the connection here, the declaration of war, right, connects this idea of escalating conflict with maximum casualties. So that's what we get at the end, right? We can create the final application of this, which would be for all x and y. If we do this, so we write this first part again: e s c a l a t e con Split x, y, introduce the model operator, x, y, then what? Then our conclusion, right, we no longer go to declaration of war, then we go to our conclusion, right? Our conclusion is we're going to experience maximum casualties, m, a, x, c, a, s, x, y. So what we've done here is uh, it looks it looks a bit intimidating, but it's it's very simple, right? What does this say? For all x and y, if x and y escalate the conflict, right? If x and y escalate the conflict, and if the fact that x and y refuse to negotiate, right? And if the fact that x and y refuse to negotiate is consistent with all things believed to be true. Then it's the case, now we skip the declaration of war and go to the final conclusion, then it's the case that they're going to experience maximum casualties, right? Now, um, uh, uh, I could, should I? There's another point I can bring up, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. Um, yeah, might as well. If I were just to have this, right, I don't need to complicate it this much, but just so that you see that the lectures are constructed in such a manner that you have a full understanding of the progression of the logic, if I just had this, the escalation of conflict um, for all x and y, if x and y escalate the conflict and x and y refuse to negotiate is consistent with everything else believed to be true, then they're going to experience maximum casualties. Um, we can see that there might be an enthymeme problem in here, right, because we're missing the connection between the declaration of war and maximum casualties, right? So that this would be an implicit, not explicit um, premise, right? This would be implicit, it would be hidden. What I've done is I've shown you that <clears throat> the structures that we've used so far is not, you don't have to get rid of what you've learned, in, you can't get rid of what you've learned in first order predicate logic, right? As I said before, non-monotonic logic augments first order predicate logic, you don't discard it. Right? And what we've seen here is that we've been able to now make sense of the formal language at a very general, super general level. 
And we see the application that this, we're not talking about truth or falsity as such, we're talking about ideas of consistency, right? So that if we escalate conflict and refuse to negotiate, we're going to end up declaring war. That makes sense. Then we've introduced the serial argumentation, which has this form, and we've continued the assessment. Well, if we declare war and both sides use full force, then we're going to experience max maximum casualties. Okay, that makes sense. And then we're able to make the syllogistic conclusion that, well, if it's the case that we escalate and we refuse to negotiate, invariably what's going to happen is that we're going to experience maximum casualties, right? Um, and we're saying that it is likely that this is the case, right? It's not necessarily certain because parties might change their stance, right? It's consistent with. So what we've done, uh, hopefully, what I've done, hopefully, and I'll wait to get your feedback before I move on and go any deeper, answer some questions. So I'm not going to post on critical thinking at least for maybe another week after this, this section goes, goes up so I can get a sense of the viewers uh, and your understanding of it and your receptivity to the points um, to make an assessment of whether I'm going to complicate it more or not. Okay. Uh, and, and, and as I said, I do, I, I do want to get into truth maintenance systems, but I can't get there until we really have a understanding of default reasoning, um, uncertainty, and the new modal operator M as is consistent with. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, this was an introduction to non-monotonic logic in our critical thinking series. Hopefully you see how obviously this applies to more complex critical thought processes because our life requires us to operate with varying degrees of certainty. With that, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.